All right, let's talk about arms. This is probably one of the most prized body parts. Biceps, triceps, forearms. They're often exposed. This is why people like to develop them, men and women. So in today's episode, we're gonna talk all about the muscles of the arms and the best exercises you can do to sculpt and shape amazing arms. This- uh, It's my favorite subject, so. Yeah, it's my favorite too. <laughs> This is the, the killing the, it. The first body part I ever trained. I think. Did, okay, so <laughs> yeah. well, when you guys were younger, was this was this the main one? Were you? I mean, you were big into bench press. Young, no, I did you? everything. I trained. I think everything arms. Yeah, I mean, that was probably my first. Like, I really liked training arms. It was just like it gravitated to me. And then chest, of course. Yeah, I'm I'm guilty of like most kids only right? arms for yeah. like two or three years. <laughs> that long? <laughs> yeah, because I was terrible at bench. Uh, so even my buddy that tried and definitely didn't do legs as a kid. I mean, that was like crazy. You know, I don't want to screw up my basketball skills. You know what I'm saying? So you know, whatever right. the excuse was I used back then as a kid, didn't want to do legs for sure. And so it was arms. Arms was wow. all, all I trained. And, you know, when they tried to get me to bench press, my form was so terrible. I've told you guys before, it took like three guys. Yeah. One guy would pin my shoulders down. The other two guys would spot the bar. <laughs> it was, it yeah. was like, and then I was like 135 pounds. <laughs> like just yeah. terrible. So. Yeah, all arms, all yeah. arms, like all the time. And when I got into being a personal trainer, I, I had trained them so frequently, so often for all my early years and teenage years that they become really, they became really stubborn. Like I could just, you couldn't hammer my arms and I wouldn't get sore. I mean, I had thrown something. Yeah. Throwing yeah. something at them. No, for, uh, I mean, I always trained kind of everything right out the gates because I, right out the gates, I bought books and followed routines. And there's that story when I met the smart way. type of deal. Yeah. <laughs> um, Just but, curling books. But yeah. I mean, there's a reason why um, arms are so popular. It's because it's a proxy for a strong physique. Meaning, you know, for the, mo for the most part, if anything's exposed, unless you're at the beach or something like that, right? If anything's exposed, it's usually your arms. Yeah. And- if you have muscular, fit-looking arms, it typically tells the person that the rest of you is fit. That's what it means by proxy. So it's no wonder why it's such a popular body part to train. I, there was a time when women didn't want to train arms, but then they became popular for women as well because you know they realized, like, well, I'm not going to get big arms. I'm going to get nice sculpted-looking arms. Yeah. And women's arms are shown as often, if not more often, um, than men's. So Now, what's funny is there's so many myths that surround arm training. Um, that this oh, will yeah. be fun. This will be a fun thing to yeah. talk about in terms of like what are the best exercises or the best, even more importantly, what are the best combination of exercise to develop, you know, to, to get well developed arms. Um, so this will be this will be a good one. Yeah, uh, yeah. But we're going to talk about like the basic because there's there's more muscles than the ones we're going to highlight today. Um, there's lots of lots of small yeah. muscles that are in there and stuff like that. We're not going to cover the shoulders as we're sticking with Bison and triceps. Yeah, yeah. Bison, we, did, we, did whole, we did a whole shoulder masterclass already, didn't we? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah we, we did, did a whole shoulder. And I definitely think that, you know, refer to that episode because I do think that when in pursuit of like aesthetic looking arms, like- You want nice shoulders. Yeah, that makes as much of a difference, if not more. In fact, I think I have smaller arms today than I did in, in my early 20s. But I have better looking arms because my, your shoulders they're more proportionate yeah. to my shoulders, so I, that yeah. makes a big difference. Now arms feel awesome to train. That's true. That's that's for sure. It's a it's a really nice feeling. It typically not hard to connect <laughs> to the muscles of the arms, which is kind of cool. Mainly because we still use our hands and arms. You know, we haven't reached the point yet where we're we're completely machine or whatever or computer. Um, so it, it, I can almost always get someone to feel their biceps, feel their triceps, and feel their forearms if I want them to. Um, so this, this isn't really a, an area where typically it's like, Ooh, we got to figure yeah. out a way to get There's you. There's not really a loss of connection. Right, usually, right, yeah. right. So I don't, there is sometimes with tricep though. Tricep sometimes can yeah. be uh, more difficult for some clients to feel. Um, and I don't want to mess up the flow of your, your episode right here, but I am curious, like, do you guys remember like of all the things that we learned and what we're probably going to talk about in this episode, as far as exercise selection and lifts and sets and reps and all these different things. Do you remember like what were like some of the most pivotal things that like or aha moments when training arms were? I know well, there's a big one for me that was like made a huge difference. I think it was probably with the same thing for me. It was the elbow position. Yes, yeah, that was a big one. That was just I didn't I didn't understand that. Like yeah. I didn't understand how you were manipulating the strength curve and 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 you know with the stretch position versus yep. can, uh, I, I didn't learn that until I learned well, like biomechanics well, later let's, on. Let's talk about that first, right? Okay. Let's let's talk about the biceps, right? They attach, um, here, you know, here underneath the elbow, and then right at the shoulder or a bit higher. There's two heads of the bicep, so because the attachment's way up here near the shoulder, 
I can make my bicep shorter simply by lifting my elbow and I can make the bicep longer by putting my elbow behind my body because it'll automatically lengthen or shorten mm -hmm. by the position of my elbow. So that's what we mean by elbow position. I can do exercises where my bicep's shortened. I can do elbow uh, position uh, exercises where my bicep is lengthened. And then I can change the resistance so that it's hardest when I'm squeezing or it's hardest when it's stretched uh, or extended. And those are the factors to consider when you're training biceps along with, this is different for triceps, but for biceps, hand position also matters. It's if you, if you were to look at your bicep right now, if you were kind of partially flex your arm, take your palm facing up and then have your palm facing down and then facing up, you'll notice your bicep shortens and lengthens. One of the actions of the bicep is also to rotate the hand. Pronate and supinate. So that also is something you want to consider when contribute you do to it. You know, bicep exercise. Yeah, one of the things I was thinking of when I was just young and just starting out and like, especially doing curls was, I was doing like a preacher curl and then was like, my range of motion was tiny. Yeah. I would just come down uh, and then bring it back uh. up and like get a squeeze and I thought I was doing something. And then like, I remember, uh, yeah, a bodybuilder or somebody came over and was like, yeah, you want to go all the way? And I was like, I had to drop like a ton of weight. Yep. Like, and it was very humbling, but then I was like, oh, wow, okay. I have to go all the way down. And so I applied that again to the elbow position on all the other exercises, but that was like a huge yeah. thing. If I was just doing short reps all the time. Three things for me, three things that were very huge moments in my arm training for that. Range of motion, elbow positioning, and compound lifts for that. Yeah. Mm. Because it was popular when I first started learning at curl to do all these uh, isolation exercises. Well, almost every bicep exercise is isolation. Yeah. So there's. And the ones that are compound are not called bicep exercises. Right. So there, it's like a sneaky way for your biceps to build, and nobody would label it as that. Uh -huh. And so I totally ignored that in my bicep and tricep training. I ignored the compound lifts that didn't fall under that category because they were either a bench press or a pull up or these movements that were for your back or your chest. And so you're like, oh, this isn't for my triceps. Yeah. Oh, and and also I was still in that trap when I was a kid of thinking that just because I felt it the most in, in an exercise that it must be building mm -hmm. that muscle. And that's a fallacy. Like yeah. there's, there's exercises sometimes. And we, we know this when we talk about things like legs, like a leg extension, you're going to feel your quads more they're gonna than go you on will. fire. Yeah. They're gonna be on fire compared to a squat, but they ain't going to come close to building your legs like a squat no. will. And it's like, we knew that that's obvious, but for some reason, that same principle, people, it's not obvious to them with when it comes to their biceps and their yeah. triceps, the, but it's the, still true. The big, the craziest mass builder you'll ever do, or just overall development of your bicep is going to be a supinated grip, chin up or pull chin down. Up. Yes. This is a compound lift for the bicep. Okay. Just like we do compound lifts for the chest, the back, the legs, and we know that those are the best for the bicep suit. Now I do want to say this, the technique's a little different. Okay. If I do a supinated grip, pull up, I'm leading with my chest and I'm squeezing back. I'm trying to get my back activated. If I'm doing it for my biceps, I'm rolling forward and I'm pulling with my arm. Same thing with a pull down. I'm doing what You're would look like- to bring your knuckles towards your yes, chest. Yes, I would look like what I'm doing is bad form. So yeah. if someone saw me do a bicep pull down like this, you might be like, oh, he does it. That's a crappy looking pull down. No, right. no, I am emphasizing the bicep on the way down versus the back with my chest out. But- Try those. Try do first off a chin up this way. Most people aren't strong enough to do it this way, so you'd have to do a pull down. But grab the bar and curl it down with this kind of rolled forward position and squeeze the biceps at the bottom. You have now done a compound lift for your biceps, and they develop. Yeah, you'll feel the difference when you do. They that. build. Oh yeah, doing this, and I've done chin ups like this where I'm only doing three or four reps. And the uh, biceps just. I did that with a superset. <laughs> oh man, that destroyed my. Yeah. So you've talked before about how like certain uh, muscle group or how low reps only lend themselves to certain muscle groups. This is the exception for like, and we've talked about like you know three rep range doesn't do much. Isn't a, a typical way you would lift biceps. The only way I would is if I was doing this a pull up. I wouldn't do three reps for curls. Yeah, no, it's just too an much. isolation it's exercise three times, and your form is going to be off. And yeah, mm -hmm, hundred yeah. percent kicking the shoulders and everything else to right. get it up. All right, today's episode is all about training and developing the muscles of the arms, biceps, triceps, and forearms. Anyway, got a giveaway for you. Maps Anabolic Advanced. That's today's giveaway. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Hey, we are also running a sale on some workout programs. Check this out. 
Maps Cardio is 50% off. The Shredded Summer Bundle is 50% off. And the Bikini Bundle is 50% off. If you're interested in any of that, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. So right. we talked about elbow position. So the three basic elbow positions you want your bicep exercises to fall under would be elbows in front of your body, elbows next to your body, and then elbows behind your body. So here's three exercises that fit that category, which is great. Now, why, why all those? Because elbows in front shortens the biceps to the sides. It's kind of neutral, you know, kind of in the middle behind the body. There's a stretch, uh, when you do a full extension. So the best exercises or some of the best exercises like this are preacher curls, elbows in front of my body, mm -hmm. standing curls, barbell or dumbbell by my body, and then incline curls where I'm sitting back on an incline, my elbows are behind Those my body. Arms yeah. back. Yeah. Those three exercises right there hits all three elbow positions. Mm -hmm. And then there's a muscle that we should probably talk about that you, if you want well-developed biceps, you also need to work on, which is the brachialis. Yes. For hammers. Yeah, and this is a flat muscle underneath the bicep, and when it develops, it really gives you this nice full look to your arm. Um, this muscle flexes the elbow, and it's most activated with a what's called a neutral grip, a hammer curl. Mm -hmm. A hammer curl will develop the brachialis uh, pretty damn well. I mean, that kind of covers it. Well, so, okay, now talk about programming that and how I do this. So if I, back when I was doing like body part splits and arms would be like an arm day, I'm actually going to do an exercise that hits each one of those in the workout. Correct. If I'm following more of an a a MAPS anabolic routine where, doing one. where I'm doing yeah one exercise, I do one on Monday, a different one on Wednesday, yes. a different one on Friday yes. for the week so that in the week I get all three elbow positions. So that's how I would program that is I want to, in a week's time, I want to make sure I hit all three elbow positions, whether I'm doing all that arm workout in one or two workouts, or I'm spreading it over three or four workouts. I want to make sure within the week I'm hitting all three major elbow positions. Yes. And then I'm going to stay with those exercises for an extended period of time in order to get good at them. Right. So I want to stick with those like three movements that you're saying for at least, you know, four, six, eight weeks. And then I'm going to change the exercises up too. So then I'm going to switch up, right, but because still follow the elbow position. Now I'm going to, people are going to be like, well, what's the difference? Elbows in front of you, preacher curl versus another elbows in front of you exercise. Well, here's now where it gets interesting. A preacher curl, especially a free weight preacher curl, most of the resistance is at the bottom because that's where gravi gravity is fighting the most. Here at the top, there's not much resistance because now my, my forearm is perpendicular to the weight and, and to gravity. Well, if I do a concentration curl where I'm leaning over, my elbow's still in front of my body, but now the hardest part of the rep is the squeeze. I'm doing an elbow in front of my cell, uh, position exercise, but the squeeze is the hardest, yeah. not the extension. So I would switch out preacher curls for something like a concentration curl yeah. because uh, this, it's the squeeze now that's the emphasis. Well, so, yeah, you're talking about triceps then. You're talking about skull crusher being the top position right here, right? And yeah. then you're talking like, say you're doing like a tricep extension for neutral. I mean, obviously that's probably not the oh. best one, but then, and then dips. For yeah, we're going to get there. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah but with the, with, back to your point with the biceps, like, so an, another thing to manipulate your point. So you could also do a preacher curl with dumbbells for that, for four weeks. And then I go over to a preacher curl on a machine. And now, and now it's different because the, the tension is still it's all the, the way same. all the way to the top. Correct. So people have to understand that like you can do dumbbell curls on the, which I'd love to do on, a, or a camber curl bar on a preacher bench. And, and it's still, it's now a different exercise when I same preacher bench, but now I'm on a machine, right? Or right. so now it's got the, the cable, right? So that's attached to it or whatever, because of the way the tension is on it. So that is a way of taking a movement that is the same, the same, but then changing it because you are changing the tension on it throughout the strength. By the curve. way, if you use a bicep machine, you can figure this out by looking at the, the pulley and the shape of the pulley. And you'll notice that, that, it, that it won't be perfectly circular. It'll be maybe be oval shaped. It'll be kind of odd shaped. And you can tell when the resistance is going to get harder. So some machines on a preacher curl, they the, the, even though it says 50 pounds on the stack, it's actually 30 at the bottom, 50 at the top. Yeah. Now you might not be able to know this by looking at it. If you're not experienced, go try it. Go try the exercise. Notice the most difficult part of the rep. And then the next time you do a similar exercise, find one where the, the, the hardest part of the rep is it a different position? By the way, bands are a great way to do this. Yep. I used to do this at home as a, when I was a kid. This is before I knew anything about bands. All I knew was, wow, this preacher curl is easy up here. 
So I attached a band around the bar and I attached around mm. a, a pole and I knew that the band would make it harder at the top. And I used to, you know, used to blow my friends away when I would have them try that out. You know, I was, I was always surprised why those machines didn't get, um, I don't know, uh, more talk, like as far as like, they, the Where you one, could change the, uh, yeah. yeah. the other yeah. It's the, too complicated. So the, you think so? That's why. Cause people that, don't know to change that pin that changes the pulley position. So at the, your, your yeah. American barbell, which was gold when you worked there, they mm -hmm. still have some of those. I yeah, love those. And mm -hmm. you can change. And they, so there's I these like machines, if you've ever seen them, so that we can educate the audience that doesn't know what this is. Some gems will have like the preacher curl machine. And then on the right, normally right on the side where the, where the wheel is or whatever, there'll be a handle that you pull out and it, you can, it normally has numbers one, two, or three. And what you're doing is you're changing the heaviest part of the weight to be mm -hmm. either in the stretch position at the, the middle position or, middle at the top, or the end yeah. at the top, which is a cool way to manipulate yeah. an exercise that is in the same plane is virtually the same thing. But now because you manipulate that, it's like it's novel to the, the muscle because it's not used to the load that's hitting right. you like that. That's right. But if you just picked an exercise from elbows in front, elbows aside, elbows in back, yeah. you're you're ninety something percent of the way there. Throw in some chin ups where your bicep emphasize, you know, uh, squeeze. Now you're doing a compound now, lift. But how often do you do reverse curls? Because I know for me, like if I go back to them, it's always like I always do too much weight because it's a very like different. So reverse that's, curls, that, is that or hammers? That's I'm I'm yeah. I normally bounce between. So those hammer two. curl more brachialis, reverse curl. The weak link tends to be the brachioradialis, which is the top of the forearm, which we'll get right. to because we're gonna get to the forearms in just a second. Okay, yeah, yeah I'm jumping ahead. All so the place. so <laughs> next uh, next, let's talk about triceps. Now triceps are different than biceps because the hand position matters zero. Yeah. If I'm doing a press down and my hands are facing in, facing down, facing up, that doesn't do Which anything. You will at all. see this. Okay, next for the listeners, the next time you'll you go to your, do, your commercial yes. gym. Okay, next time you go to your commercial gym, you'll always see this. It's normally the young teenage boy. I'm guilty, I'm sure, of doing this at one point in my my lifting career. And he'll go over to the cable machine and he'll do uh the the, the middle the, the, the metal the metal yeah. triangle, then he'll do the rope. Push down, and then you'll do the reverse grip. All the same thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all the same, same thing. Angle, same Nothing. And you think it's different because you're doing the rope, the triangle, and they may even argue like it feels different. Yeah, and well, we know what it, why it feels different when you supinate your hand, you drive your elbows into your sides a yeah. little more, and yeah. so it's really about that. that but as far as what it's targeting, as far as your tricep, it is no the same. It's the same thing, no. and that that kid would be far better off. You know, doing the rope push downs and then moving the cable all the way down the bottom and then flipping around and doing overhead yeah. extensions like that is going to target that completely different. Yeah. So, uh, yes, the elbow position, I mean, wrist wrist position no Doesn't longer matter. matters no. when we're talking about triceps. Now, elbow position matters a lot with triceps because of the way the, atta the attachments are for the tricep. If my arms are behind my body, my tricep is shortened. As I move my elbow to being above my body or, or you know, by my head, now the tricep is being stretched, or at least the long head, what's called the long head of the tricep. There's three heads. The long head attaches, I believe, near the scapula. And so if I bring my elbow up, now I'm stretching the tricep. So shortened versus you know moderate versus lengthened, you want to look for different elbow positions when you do tricep exercises. So you could pick three to four because you could actually pick uh, an exercise where your elbows are next to your body, in front of your body, overhead, or even behind your body. So there's actually four choices, although... One of my favorite compound lifts uh, for triceps is elbows kind of behind the body. So I tend to leave that out when I'm looking at isolation exercises. Yeah. So the best examples of, or some great examples, I should say, of different elbow positions are press downs, press downs, elbows next to my body. Now I, elbows in front of my body, skull crusher, great exercise for that. And then elbows up here pointing up next to my head or above my body, overhead, extension. overhead tricep extension. Rope, cable, dumbbell, barbell, all elbow uh, up by my head. All three should be present in your routine, all three elbow positions. Now, I did say next, like behind the body as well. This is where compound lifts. Now, it's not so controversial or weird to hear people say compound lifts are great for triceps just because I think it's been more communicated. Close grip bench press is amazing. Dips is my favorite. I, I don't think you could beat dips for developing the triceps in terms of compound lifts. And that would kind of qualify as behind the body as you go down uh, to the bottom. So I don't know. What do you guys like better, dips or close grips? So I'm partial to the dips. the close grips. You're a dips. You're close I, yeah, grip, dip, I just and you know I'm trying. What why? What is it about that that I like better? Maybe I maybe I feel like um, I can load 
the the bench press more. It's harder and, to load different. And, you have to put and, chain and focus more on tricep because it's just there's more of a st like dips are a better. How about this? Dips are a better overall exercise. I'll concede that no, all day long because it's more functional. You have to yeah, stabilize yeah, your body, shoulder stabilization in there, core stabilization in there, control of your own body weight. Right. It would win as far as a better exercise. But I have, I've had, I personally think I've had more success putting mass on my triceps from close grip benches mm -hmm. because it's easier. Because it's easier to control. I can load it more, and I can concentrate just all tricep and take it out of my chest and shoulders and put more on my tricep. And for that reason, I lean that way a little yeah. bit more. Although yeah. both belong in the routine. And I know there's probably a lot of people out there too. That I've uh, come across that that avoid dips because of their shoulder has issues uh, and. So I get that, like, too. So the close grip bench press is a great option for that to yeah. learn. I would say use band-assisted dips if that's the case. Get good at them because it's such a great exercise. It is. Um, by the way, dips for triceps and dips for chest look a little different. If you're doing dips for chest, you want to lean forward and you want the elbows to flare out a little bit. If you want dips for triceps, you're going to stay more upright <laughs> elbows and your tight. elbows are going to be much tighter to your body. That's going to emphasize uh, the triceps. Close grip presses, uh, people always screw up by going too close. Yeah. You go too close, you are asking for right, trouble wanna, in the wrist. This is how I tell people to line up. So you pinch your elbows by your side, and you want your it's, arms it's, to it's, at 90. It's, it's about shoulder width. slide into your ribs. Like yeah. It has to come straight that's back. Where you want, yeah. there's, that's where you want your 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 yeah. uh, arms lined up to where it's comfortable. Yeah. You don't want to be like this to where you're No. And then another flaring. thing is if you, really, if you want to emphasize the triceps with this close grip press, you want the bar to come towards the chest or nipples. You want that che that tricep extension. You don't want the bar to come down at the belly because yeah. then what you're doing is a front delt lift. Uh, yeah. It's very front delt heavy. So the bar should come back as you go down, almost like a skull, cr like a compound skull crusher. Not quite because there is a lift like that that we're not. That we're but do not about. neglect these two exercises. No. Like yeah. that. And in fact, when I'm building a routine for my arms, these compound, just like our legs, it's so funny. Like yeah. legs, ever we've 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 convinced everybody. Obviously, squatting and deadlifting should be the core of your your leg routine. Well, your your dips and your close grip bench press and your your pull up, in my opinion, should be the core of your arm routine. Yep. And then you build the other the other use the elbow positioning stuff that we're talking about for all your isolation exercise. But the in in a week. Those have got to be in there. Yeah. You can't have a week go by and there's not a dip, there's not a close grip bench press, and there's not a pull up involved yeah. in there. If you are, you're missing out. That's no different than a week going by, in my opinion, and you're not deadlifting or squatting. By the way, you want to know what's funny about the chin up that we were just talking about? A beginner who tries to do a chin up tends to do a bicep chin up. It's the advanced person that doesn't that because they learn how to do it for yeah. back. Yeah, they do it for back. And then you tell them it's for bicep, like, oh, you know, what do you mean? Do it like you don't know how to do a chin up properly, where you kind of hunch forward and you're pulling with your arms. That'll hit those biceps. But yeah, so for triceps, every week, you want to do an exercise that hits the different elbow positions, and the hand position is totally a waste of time. Does is, nothing. is there any exercises that you guys would categorize for you know triceps or biceps, for that matter, that you think are... And I don't want to say a waste of time, because there's no such thing as like an exercise that's a waste of time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that you tend to not mess too much with because you think it, it brings the least amount of value. Yeah. Uh, I think we've argued this before. Like, I'm not a real big fan of tricep kickbacks. Me too. That's oh, that's on yeah. that list. I, I, know you, I know you argue it, Sal, but yeah. I'm like, going to write teasing. Clients, I think I, I might tease do that. As a, yeah. yeah, I tease them about no, it. No, like I like it because it's a really good shortened position for the triceps. And uh, if you're, especially for advanced lifters who often cut their tricep exercises short, the reps. So whenever you see someone cut a bicep, uh, rep short. It typically means they don't go all the way down. Tricep exercises, people don't extend all the way. They do this. But when you do a kickback, you have to really extend the hell out of your tricep. That's when you'll see the squeeze. But I still, I don't rank it. It's not a top 10. Yeah, I yeah. think and I, th I think an overhead extension gets that just uh, fine. Yeah, but people even here, they do this. You don't oh, see people oh, they don't bring their yeah. Well, like I that. mean, I still would. I would still. No, I mean, full, full. Extension. I would still oh, extension, defer yeah. to our original top three things that I said. You know, range of motion, yeah. uh, compound lifts, and then what was the other one I said? The elbow position. Elbow I position. mean, those three are the. You, yeah. you, so no matter what exercise you're doing, if you're not doing a full range of motion, you're missing out. I'll, on I'll give gains. you a tricep exercise that I think is. I mean, again, they all have value, but this one's le less value. Is when people don't even use a handle, they grab for some reason grabbing the wire i don't know why people do and they do oh, this little tricep exercise <laughs> yeah, by like that. grabbing the wire <laughs> i like that it's I, so easy hey, so here's Yay. the deal i like that better than a kickback because at least there's tension on the tricep through the entire exercise but why grab the cable when i grab a handle or a rope because you saw a bodybuilder do it be honest 
I am the bodybuilder. <laughs> <laughs> I am the bodybuilder. I am the bodybuilder. You didn't invent it, though. I, yeah, I, did. <laughs> I don't think I did it. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? It, I think uh, those the the way the ball actually the fits in your hand is actually sometimes more comfortable. Grab a than, rope than the, the hand. The, the rope would be yeah. so. Sometimes if there's a rope there, I would okay. actually do the rope. Yeah. I for for biceps, I know there's value because the elbow position right here. But this is so dumb. Oh, I'm curling sorry. that way. Yeah, oh, that's a great pump. No, no, that not curl. You so mean revert? Dumb. You mean triceps that way? No, he means no, curl. I mean curls. It's like I get it. Like you, you want to put your arms up and get the elbow position. Oh, there. well, see, I'm gonna I'm gonna argue Bro, with that's you. That's yeah. crazy. I, pump. The, the reason why because there's very few other than the the chin up. There's not another bicep exercise you're yeah, ever gonna do with an elbow up. position there. Yeah. Are right. you, have you ever, in that fully lengthened there's position even like that? Curls behind the head. Yeah, if you really I used go. to do a yeah. lap pull down. How do you a lap, do that? A lap pull down. I go to a lap pull down and, and, and I touch my neck uh, and I curl to so my neck. It's such a shortened position for and the bicep. And it's it so novel. It, yeah. It's so novel yeah. that you, you there's nothing else you do like but that. But it's not gonna like it's not gonna supplant. They make a great they make a great machine that not all gyms have where you sit down in it. Elbows are way up there. And it puts you and you have to you lock your elbow in here and you curl here. Yeah, and yeah. it's a, it's an amazing it's an amazing exercise. That's not bad. It's not and bad. It, it, it's the closest thing to a chin up. Yep. The, there's nothing else. There's no other bicep exercise you'll Where ever you do way up there with the elbow position like that. Yeah. So I thought you meant the reverse skull crusher, which I would tell uh, you yeah, absolutely. Well, that's even that's more why worthless. they named it the skull crusher. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's people. That, that is a stupid way to do that because yeah. there is no with the pronating, supinating the hands makes no difference. No, except so you now may, your grip is way worse and you're probably yeah, more dangerous and you should absolutely. So yeah. All right. Let's talk about forearms. So forearms. Obviously, uh, you know, strong forearms connect you to the world. Very important that you have well-developed, strong forearms. And a lot of people don't realize, especially guys, this is one of the top body parts that women use to judge uh, whether or not it's they find a man attractive. Also, many times the limiting factor why you can't get stronger on some of your curls. That's and stuff. right, because a lot of we guys use our arm, hands so little. Yeah, there aren't their forearms get so pumped. Yeah. They get and I've been here before where I'm like curling and it's actually the pump in my forearms yep. and then my yeah. grip gives out before Destroys you, yeah. My yeah. biceps give yeah. out. Now these are forearms are easy to train. Uh wrist curls. So really anything with resistance where you're curling the wrist, you could do this over a bench or even just standing. Uh, reverse wrist curls yeah. where you're just pulling up and then Behind reverse the bicep curls oh, okay. or reverse reverse grip curls, which you are talking about. This oh, right yeah, here, yeah, yeah. this right here develops this muscle here at the top of the forearm called the brachioradialis here yep. at the top of the elbow. Oh, yeah. And nothing will hit that muscle like a reverse grip, reverse curl. Yeah. Um, and if you've never done these before, go light because they get real oh, sore. Oh, because it gets tight and sore. Yeah. Like, that's one that you'll feel for a couple yes. days. And then one of my favorite exercises just for overall grip strength Overall stability throughout the entire body, and of course, developing the forearms. Heavy, far, firmer walks. Like mm -hmm. you hold on to heavy pair of dumbbells for time while you're walking, Love and it. it's an isometric lift. It's true. It's not a full range of motion exercise, but you typically use your forearms in isometric ways. Mm -hmm. So it's not a bad way to train uh, the forearms, and it's a very functional way to train the forearms because again, you typically need to be able to hold on to something. Yeah. Well, now, how do you feel in terms of like, because we, we, we talked a little bit about different handles and grips and things for like bicep, different. tricep, different with forearms, right? Yes. There's benefit there. Different thicknesses of the bar. Yeah. So because it's an isometric, most of the strength that I'm going to build is going to be in the size, you know, that's going to be determined by the size of the bar that I'm holding. But you could wrap a towel around it yep. and you can have a thicker handle and now it's a different position. Or you could wrap a towel around it, hold the hand, the, yeah, the towel pinch itself. Pinch grip or, yeah. Or you even, could pinch grip, yeah. you know, things in in this fashion or even in this fashion. And now you're working different different positions. Now, order here, okay? Forearms last, not beginning of workout. Don't work your forearms before your biceps. Yeah, because you biceps. don't want your forearms to fatigue and, and limit um, your ability to do the Unless other this is like a specialized area for you. It's an area you right, really want right. to focus on. Then I'd say it's train them first, but rarely ever. I've never had a client I train forearms before biceps and triceps. No, it's always never. I finish with happened. that. I finish yeah. with a with a forearm exercise. Yeah, always at the end of the of the arm uh, workout. But that's and it. then all the other same rules apply that we always talk about with sets and reps, right? I mean, this still, all the research is around somewhere between twelve to twenty uh, sets total in a month per week. Yeah, per week is yeah. what you're. Did I say month you per did. week. Uh, is what's optimal. Although I will say this, you could probably get away with, and I'm going to explain why, you you typically people get away with less sets for arms. Because you're doing it in the other compound Yeah, lips. because every time you're working your chest and your back and your shoulders, you're probably involving the triceps and biceps. That's how my training has completely flipped from when I was, when I was a kid and all I did was bicep and tricep stuff all the time. I rarely actually do them now mm. because I do so much compound lifting, which I neglected when I was younger. It doesn't take much, and obviously I attribute some of that to how much I train them for so long 
that when I do heavy bench, heavy pull-ups, I yep. do row, dead, dead even lifting. deadlifting. Deadlifting stimulates your bicep. Like you do some of these heavy compound lifts. It just doesn't take that much of arm work, you know, to continue to stimulate and grow the arms. No, I do, you know, on average, I'll do anywhere between 12 to 15 sets per body part per week, but arms are always about nine maybe 10 or 11 because they're getting hit with all the other stuff. Yeah. It's like, it would be overtraining almost or a waste of time for me to do that as many sets for my biceps. Yeah. They're involved they with for, almost everything. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And yeah. forearms, I do way even way less because yeah. every back and arm extra, every yeah. time you grab something, you need to hold on to it. Those forearms. You know, the, the, the strong, I've had phases where I've been on like forearm kicks training like that. I never got bigger, stronger forearms and just actually all focused on my deadlift. Oh, no forearm, deadlifts? no yeah. forearm training. Just when Dead I was, farmer walks when I was, years. yeah. And that, Gold. cause that was in there actually when I was doing that, cause we were doing that all training together back in those days. Yeah. Uh, when I was chasing your deadlift number, um, my, that my, that was the strongest yep. my form. And I never, I didn't do a single forearm exercise. Yep, it was yep. just from getting really, really Holding strong the weight. Yeah. If you, you can hold on to 500 pounds on a deadlift with no straps, like you're, you're, you're going to have decent, forearms. you're going to have some serious yeah. forearm strength. Yeah, excellent. Look, if you like mind pump, if you want to follow some of our workouts, check this out, go to Instagram, mind pump media for under $5 a month. We will provide a new workout every single week. So you don't have to get one of our full programs. Although, if you want a full program and you want to go for it, get those. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. But again, Mind Pump Media on Instagram, under $5 a month, get a new workout every single week. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Stefano, And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 